Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Drew Rabion, radiologist. This is a sonography radiology training channel. I will present different videos could be benefit for physicians and general population. In this video series, I will talk about fetus ultrasound and try to explain general information for pregnant women simply. This is the fifth video in this video series. In the previous video, I explained some of our purposes of first trimester ultrasound and in this video, the continuation of these purposes are explained. The first one is false pregnancy. What is the definition of false pregnancy? False pregnancy, clinically termed pseudocysis, is the belief that you are expecting a baby when you are not really carrying a child. People with pseudocysis have many, if not all, symptoms of pregnancy, with the exception of an actual fetus. What is the causes of false pregnancy? Although the exact causes still aren't known, doctors suspect that psychological factor may trick the body into thinking that it's pregnant. In some countries, many families traditionally expect a young bird who has just entered their family to give birth to a baby shortly after marriage. In particular, in rural communities in which emphasize the early pregnancy of girls shortly after marriage is common and customary, these women are under pressure in many ways to become pregnant as soon as possible and to guarantee the durability and stability of their new shared life with the birth of their first child. If in a family false beliefs to such pointless issues are so strong and the new birth pregnancy is also postponed for the same reason false pregnancy is one of the several psychological problems that may increase. When a woman feels an intense desire to get pregnant, which may be because of infertility, repeat miscarriage, impending menopause, and desire to get married, their body may produce some pregnancy signs, including swollen belly, enlarged breaths, and even the sensation of fetal movements. The woman's brain then misinterprets those signals as pregnancy and triggers the release of hormones that lead to actual pregnancy symptoms. Women with pseudocysis have many of the same symptoms as those who are actually pregnant, including interruption of the menstrual period, swollen belly, enlarged and tender breasts, changes in the nipples, and possibly milk production, nausea and vomiting, weight gain, and feeling of fetal movements. These symptoms can last for just a few weeks, for nine months, or even for several years. A very small percentage of patients with false pregnancy will arrive at the doctor's office or hospital with what feels like labor pains. Which test for false pregnancy is needed? To determine whether a woman is experiencing a false pregnancy, the doctor will usually evaluate their symptoms, perform a pelvic exam and abdominal ultrasound. The same tests used to feel and visualize the unborn baby during a normal pregnancy. In a case of false pregnancy, no baby will be seen on the ultrasound and there won't be any heart be. Sometimes, however, the doctor will find some of the physical changes that occur during pregnancy, such as enlarged womb. Urine and blood pregnancy tests will always be negative in these cases, with the exception of rare cancers that produce similar hormones to the pregnancy. When women believe they are pregnant, 
especially for a period of several months, it can be very upsetting for them to learn they are not. Doctors need to gently break the news and provide psychological support including therapy to help the patient with pseudocysis recover from this appointment. Against false pregnancy, there is another item named blighted ovum. Blighted ovum occurs when the fertilized egg combination of a sperm and ovum implants in the womb but an embryo is not developed inside it. Its another name is unembryonic pregnancy and is in fact one of the causes of abortion in the early stages of pregnancy. There is a large pregnancy site in the womb but there is no fetus inside it. Sometimes this abortion occurs so early that even the pregnant woman still doesn't know that she is pregnant. One of the first things you need to know if you have been diagnosed with a blighted ovum is that this is a loss. Give yourself time and permission to grieve. This is a type of miscarriage and you can help yourself in the grieving process by learning more about about surviving a miscarriage. Generally, at 6 to 7 week of pregnancy, ultrasonography should indicate the presence of embryo with normal embryonic heart B. As you can see in this image, there is a pregnancy slug in the womb with a small embryo which is at 6 weeks and 1 day and we can see normal heartbeat of the embryo. In the blighted ovum, the gestational sac is observed inside the womb, but the embryo is not developed inside. So the radiologist only reports the presence of pregnancy sac. What is the signs of a blighted ovum? With a blighted ovum, you may have experienced signs of pregnancy. For example, you may have had a positive pregnancy test or a late period. Symptoms of abortion may then appear, including abdominal pain, vaginal spotting or bleeding, or a heavy menstrual bleeding. What is the cause of a blighted ovum? A blighted ovum is the cause of about 50% of first trimester miscarriages and is usually the result of chromosomal problems. A woman's body recognizes abnormal chromosomes in a fetus and naturally doesn't try to continue the pregnancy because the fetus will not develop into a healthy baby. With a blighted ovum, your pregnancy test level may rise because the placenta may continue to grow for a brief time, even when an embryo is not present. For this reason, an ultrasound test is usually needed to diagnose a blighted ovum, which confirms that despite the presence of fairly large pregnancy site in the womb, no embryo exists, and the physician reports a large pregnancy site but no embryo. How you can prevent a blighted ovum? Unfortunately, in most cases, a blighted ovum cannot be prevented. Some couples will seek out genetic testings if multiple early pregnancy losses occur. A blighted ovum is often a one-time occurrence and rarely will a woman experience more than one. Most doctors recommend couples wait one to three regular menstrual cycles before trying to conceive again after any type of miscarriage. And the last section is molar pregnancy. Which people are likely to have molar Pregnancy. The first one is young women between 13 to 18 years old, women over 35 years old, those with a history of molar pregnancy, and those who had repeated spontaneous abortions. Molar pregnancy occurs when there are certain abnormalities in the fertilized egg. The fertilized egg never turns into an embryo named complete molar pregnancy or grows abnormally and cannot survive, named 
partial molar pregnancy. Complete molar pregnancy in normal pregnancies, the fertilized egg contains 23 chromosomes from the father and 23 chromosomes from the mother. In most of the complete molar pregnancies, the mother's chromosomes do not exist in the fertilized egg and the father's chromosomes duplicate another copy. Therefore, two copies of father's chromosomes exist in the eggs and no chromosomes are available from the mother. In this fetal condition, there is no embryonic sac or normal placental tissue. Instead of the placenta forms socks shaped as a cluster of grapes. Partial molar pregnancy. In most of the partial molar pregnancies, the fertilized egg also contains the mother's complementary chromosomes, but the father's chromosomes duplicate. Therefore, instead of 46 chromosomes, there will be 69 chromosomes. This phenomenon occurs when the chromosomes in the sperms have doubled or two sperms have fertilized one ovum. In this case, there will be several placental tissue within the abnormal tissue that is similar to the grapes of cluster. Women ask the physician, how can I know if I have a molar pregnancy? First, you may have symptoms of a normal pregnancy, but after a while, you will see more vaginal spatting or bleeding. Your bleeding can be bright red or brown in color, continuous or discontinuous, and mild or severe. The bleeding can begin six weeks after gestation or later. You may also have severe nausea and vomiting, abdominal spasm or swelling, and polyuria. The size of the womb is also disproportionate to the gestational age and rapid womb enlargement occurs. In molar pregnancy, the tighter of pregnancy hormone levels increases severely disproportionate to gestational age. In ultrasonography, complete molar pregnancy is observed as a white mass in the womb in which no fetal organs exist. But in partial molar pregnancy, definite diagnosis with ultrasonography is often difficult. In this case, there is a very large placenta which has this proportionate size compared to the womb and changes are seen in it which is called molar placenta. As you can see in this image, we can see the womb the fetal head and a very large and abnormal placenta which occupies most of the pregnancy site and compresses the fetal head. If you like this video, please subscribe this channel. If you would like to get notification for the next videos, please press the small bell. If you have any question or video suggestions, please write in the comments. Thank you for your attention.